Hello friends, in this video you are going to learn how to design isolated sloped or trapezoidal footing using this excel sheet and at the end of this video you will learn how to prepare the final schedule and final design detail as per the result of your excel sheet. So for better understanding watch the video till the end. So first look at the problem statement. Here we have to design an isolated trapezoidal or sloped footing which is subjected to 1850 kN as a service load. The size of the column here is 230 by 600 mm. The material that we have to use for the design of this footing is M20 and FE415. The self bearing capacity of the soil at the proposed site is 250 kN per meter square. Here finally we have to prepare the schedule and detail for the design results given by your excel sheet. So try to understand how to use this excel sheet. So you have to edit the values only in yellow cells. You don't need to do anything with the white cells. Only you have to edit the value in this yellow cells. And these light blue cells will perform the checks against the particular parameter. And this orange color cell will suggest the safe possible value for the later action. Now finally start the design. So first of all here we need to put the safe bearing capacity of the soil. So just go back to your problem statement. So here the safe bearing capacity of the soil is 250 kN per meter square. So just go back to your sheet and put here as 250 kN per meter square. The grade of concrete we have to use for the design of uh, this footing as M20 and for steel we have to consider as FE415. So just go back to your excel sheet and here drop down list, uh, list is there for choosing the grade of your concrete. So just see 20, 25, 30. As per your requirement you can choose the grade of uh, your concrete. So here for the proposed uh, statement we have to consider what M20 grade of your concrete and the grade of steel is what FE415. So drop down list is there and choose your FE415 grade of steel. And the section size of your column is 230 by 600 mm. So just go back and put here as 230 by 230 and 600 mm is your section size of column. And the clear cover we have to consider as 50 mm. You know very well the minimum cover for the foundation should be what 15 mm. And the service load is what uh, 1850 1850 kN load is your service load. And the diameter of bar we have to choose here as, as per your requirement. So uh, either you can take 12 mm, 16 mm, 20 mm. So at the initial stage you have to choose the diameter of bar. So I am going to consider 16 mm diameter of bar. Got it. And the percentage of weight of footing we have to consider here. Accordingly, the self weight of the footing here it is going to be calculated in the white cell. So basically you may ask a question that how we can calculate the self weight of the footing without of having the size of the footing. Like to calculate the self weight of any element you need to have the three dimension of that any particular element. So especially if you are talking about the footing. So to have the self weight of the footing we need to have the dimension of the footing. But here we, we don't have the dimension of the footing. So for that we are going to assume that self weight of the footing is 10% of your service load. Okay. So that's I am going to do 10% of your service load. So the load is going to become what 185 kN. If you are going to add these two value. So total gross load is going to become 2035 kN. So as per this load and bearing capacity of the soil. The length of the footing required is 3.04. And width of the footing is required is 2.67. So here slightly more than of this recommendation we have to provide the length and width. So uh, for the safer design. So I am going to provide here as 3.1 meter as the length of your footing. And the width of the footing is 2.75 I am going to take. 2.75 as a width of the footing I am going to consider. So here the projection. Here it is what the projection beyond the face of your column in both of the direction. So along the length of the footing it is 1.25 and along the width of the footing it is 1.26. So while designing of uh, this kind of footing uh, try to match this value as much as possible or try to close this difference. If it is 1.25 and it is 1.26 means it is very close so it will be good. It will be okay. You will have uniform contact pressure. To, so to ensure that a uniform contact pressure you have to maintain this, uh, this projection close as much as possible. Is that all okay? Now the top projection from the column face. So the from the column face the projection 
this projection we have to decide so the value will range from what 50 to 100 mm normally we are taking this projection as 50 to 100 mm so i am going to consider for this problem as 100 mm depth at edge of the footing depth at the edge of the footing at what at the edge of the footing how much depth should be so as per your is code is 456 2000 or sp34 this edge depth should not be less than of 150 mm this edge depth should not be less than of 150 mm so that's why we are going to consider it as 200 mm that's why we are going to consider it as 200 mm and the upward soil pressure we are getting what 217.01 so for the safe design your upward soil pressure should always be less than of your sbc of the soil so that check is performed by this cell your upward soil pressure is less than of your sbc hence okay we can proceed uh, for the next step Now the sheet will calculate the bending moment along the length of the footing and the bending moment along the width of the footing and as per this bending moment the depth required along the length of the footing is this much and the depth required along the width of the footing is this much. So among these two value we have to go with the maximum requirement as 767.64 mm. So uh, more than of this requirement we have to provide as overall depth so I am going to provide here as overall depth 800 mm so if I am taking 800 mm so available effective depth is what 742 mm and required is 767 so you know that uh, uh, your requirement is more than of your available so it's wrong it will not work that's why we are having this cell by the red color it is what it is wrong you are all uh, your available depth will always be more th more than that of your depth required that's why we need to increase the overall depth of your footing such that your available effective depth should be more than that of your required effective depth so that's why i'm going to change it to what 850 mm so if you if you are going to take 850 mm so available effective depth will become what 792 which is more than that of 767 so now finally you can calculate the actual self weight of the footing so actual self weight of the footing is going to become what 99.94 so uh, sheet will take care about it you don't need to worry sheet will calculate the self weight of the footing and if you are going to find out the percentage of this self weight of the footing by the self weight of the load uh, by the service load so that is going to become what 5.4 5.4% 5 is the self weight of the footing but here while starting the calculation we have considered the 10% so unnecessarily we have considered the excess load here so what we have to correct it uh, it is what 5.4 so to be on safer side I am going to consider the self weight of the footing as 5.5 so once you uh, put this 5.5 so actual load is going to become what of the self weight of the footing as 101.75 kN now so the demand will be reduced slightly but still we are going to take a same size of the footing because uh, great difference is not happening here okay very close difference is happening that's why we are going to take the same sizes of the footing so finally everything will be as it is now just come down and decide the reinforcement so along the length of the footing as per the movement the area of steel required is 2992 mm and minimum requirement as 0.12 percent of section size of your footing that is b into d so what if i am taking what uh, 16 mm diameter of bar if i am taking what uh, so sheet will automatically follow the maximum amongst these two requirement so if st is greater than of uh, minimum then sheet will follow this maximum if your minimum is more than of your required then sheet will follow that so if i am taking what uh, 16 mm diameter of bar drop down list is there to choose the diameter of bar so if I am taking what 16 mm diameter of bar so spacing required is 184 so I, I would like to take what 150 mm spacing of bar along the length of the footing along the width of the footing what we have to take 16 mm diameter of bar I am going to take in this direction also along the width so 197 spacing is required so less than of this required you have to provide because we have to provide the more reinforcement okay so uh, always your spacing should be less than of 
this required okay and it should be by the factor of 25 mm because uh, 25 mm will become your 1 inch so on site execution it is easy if you are providing what 100 mm that is going to become what 4 inches so on site uh, they can measure it as 4 inch if you are taking what 150 mm so on site that will become what 6 inches so it is easy to execute on site that's why by the rounding of 25 mm you have to choose the spacing finally so what Along the uh, width of the footing it is 197. So lower value is going to become what? 175. But still I am going to take what? 150 mm for the more safer side. Otherwise you can take 175 also here. You can take here 175 also. But uh, you know that uh, the one way shear check for the design of your footing is mainly depends on the depth of the footing and percentage of reinforcement is available. So if you are putting slightly slightly more percentage of reinforcement, so that is easy for one way shear check uh, to be passed. That's why 150, 150 I am taking. So 16 at 150, 16 at 150. Otherwise you can take it, it as a 175. Okay, so suppose uh, uh, you can go with the 175, but I am going to take here as 150 here, 150 here. Is that all okay? Now, just move fast and look at that. Uh, your project depth is safe for one way shear along the length of the footing. Your project depth uh, is safe uh, for one way shear along the width of the footing. So, along length of the footing, along the width of the footing, in both of the direction, your project depth uh, is safe in one way shear. Now, just come down. And look at this, uh, check for the two-way shear. So your depth provided is also safe for the two-way shear. So your design is now finally okay. So length of the footing is 3100, width of the footing is 2750 and length at the top of the footing means as, as you know that the size of the column is how much? Uh, 600 by 600 by 230 and we have taken the projection as of uh, 100 mm beyond the face of your column in this direction in this direction also 100 mm in this direction as 100 mm in this direction as 100 mm so in all of direction the k value we have considered it as uh, as 100 mm so finally this top rectangular size is going to become what 100 plus 100 that is going to become 200 plus your uh, this longer side is what 600 so obviously it is going to become what 6 uh, uh, sorry 800 mm it is going to become what 800 mm likewise along this direction this value it is going to become what 100 plus 100 plus 230 230 so total value it is going to become what 430 mm so that's calculation we are done by the sheet itself you don't need to worry about that so on top it is 800 and along the width it is 430 and first depth at the edge it is uh, 200 and remaining depth uh, it is going to become 650 so overall it is going to become what 850 mm depth uh, that is what overall depth uh. but in uh, as a, here it is given as uh, d1 and d2 now reinforcement provided along the length of the footing as 16 mm dia at a spacing of 150 and here along the width of the footing 16 mm dia at a spacing of 150 so along both of the direction same reinforcements are there so in this way you have to use this spreadsheet for the design of your isolated uh, sloped or trapezoidal footing so prepare the final schedule for your design result given by the excel sheet so footing number we i have given here as fc1 and column number here i have given as c1 so put the length of the footing width of the footing as per your uh, excel sheet design result so length of the footing is 3100 and base width of the footing is 2750 so just go back to your cad and put here as length of the footing 3100 mm and the width of the footing is 2750 mm and the length at the top of the footing is what uh, 800 mm and width is what 430 mm 800 and 430 that we have to put here as 800 and it will be what your 430 430 mm at top and that first depth at the edge of the footing it is going to become what 200 mm the next depth will become 650 mm that is difference of 800 and 200 total depth is what 800 and your edge depth is what actually uh, 200 mm if you if you are going to calculate this difference 
that is going to become what 650, uh, 650 mm now next we have to put the uh, reinforcement along the length of the footing at bottom and reinforcement along the width of the footing at bottom okay so actually it should be what length of the footing it should be what your length of the footing it should be what your width of the footing okay that we have to correct here along the width of the footing so first put along the length of the footing so t of 16 mm dia at a spacing of 150 mm center to center okay and steam 16 mm dia at a spacing of again 150 mm center to center in both of the direction and the remark means you have to uh, write the uh, type of the footing either it is pad footing either, is, either it is stepped footing or either it is sloped footing that you have to write in remark so it is basically sloped footing that you have to put here as sloped footing so it is what your final schedule and accordingly you have to prepare the detail so this is what in plan detail of your footing so length of the footing 3100 width you have to put here as and at top the projection on all of side is 100 mm beyond the face of your column okay so this is what in plan detail and it is what the sectional elevation along the length of the footing means along the longer dimension of the footing it is what sectional detail so depth of the footing at the edge is 800 overall depth is going to become what 850 mm okay so this kind of detail you, uh, sectional elevation you have to prepare here as and uh, along the width also you have to pay, prepare it uh, okay and all the details you have to show here so in this way you have to prepare the final schedule and detail is that all okay now you can use this excel sheet for the complete design of foundation of any real life project and you can prepare final layout of the foundation and uh, you can prepare the final schedule of your design results and then finally you can prepare the sectional details of your design output okay so this sheet is very useful hope you have enjoyed this video please subscribe this channel and share this video with all your civil engineering community friends thank you